this basic principle uh, that we don't leave anybody behind and this basic recognition that that often means prisoner exchanges with enemies uh, is not unique to my administration. It dates back to the beginning of our republic. Uh, and uh, with respect to how uh, we announced it, I think it was important for people to understand that uh, this is not some abstraction. This is not a political football. You have a couple of parents whose kid volunteered to fight in a distant land. Uh, and as Commander-in-Chief of the United States Armed Forces, uh, I am responsible for those kids. Um, I make absolutely no apologies for making sure that we get back uh, a young man to his parents and that the American people understand that uh, this is somebody's child. President Barack Obama telling the American people that we don't leave people behind. And that is all part of the discussion here. I'm joined now by someone new to Midpoint. Let us welcome in Mariana Mancuso. She is a political strategist and writer at politicalhype.com. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you Thank for joining you for us. Thank you for having me, Ed. Because here we know it's about time we get that younger thought about what's happening in the Republican Party Absolutely. right now. First of all, as, as someone who follows this all and strictly your look at this when he says we don't leave anybody behind, this is the best deal that we could have done. I have no apology for this whatsoever. Your immediate reaction is. My immediate reaction is yes, we don't leave anybody behind. The way that it was handled was absolutely inappropriate. But why then was it handled this way? Don't you think that the, re the Democrats, certainly in the Obama administration, are smart enough to know that they're going to get some kind of pushback on this? Well, you have to look at what was happening in the meantime. We saw that the VA scandal was written all across the papers. That was front page news. The Benghazi committee was being formed and people were starting to look into that. And so the Obama administration wanted to pivot and wanted to turn this into, look, we're bringing somebody home. This is excellent. And that's not what happened. Well, okay, then let's, let's, let's back up a little bit here because certainly as, as, a, as a strategist, you've seen this, you've worked with the politicians before and again this is a question that nobody really seems to want to answer to this point they kind of dodge it a little bit don't you think that they were smart enough to know that this might not have been the best thing to do and this would not have been accepted very well certainly politicians are supposed to be way ahead of that game right absolutely you would have hoped but I think what happened with the Obama administration is they thought that they'd have the party backing they did not anticipate that the Democrats were going to join the force with the Republican Party and say this is inappropriate we're not doing this we can't believe you sidestep Congress and the Constitution to just make up what you wanted to happen and just go along with it. How much of a shock is that to you when you see already Dianne Feinstein and others who seem to be putting some distance between themselves and the president over this, over this issue? You know, I will say this. We've seen over the past couple years with Congress, they haven't been able to agree on anything. We've had one heck of a time trying to pass things, and now we finally got both sides of the aisle to agree on one thing, and that is the way that the president handled this situation. And you know what? This is just going to show you that the Democrats are going to have a very difficult time in 2014. All right, now I'm going to put you on the spot here as a strategist because that's exactly what we look at, the strategy of going yes. forward here. You are sitting in the White House right now. Uh, the president is sitting there. You have his own party starting to turn against him just a little bit. You have the media even starting, strangely enough, the media will actually <laughs> turn against the president every now and then. You're the strategist. What's the first thing you tell the president to do? You have to come out and admit that you made a mistake. That is the first thing that has to happen, and unfortunately it's not going to in this case. The president has become drunk on power, and he is willing to do whatever he thinks and deems necessary. This is effectively Jimmy Carter Part 2. Is the president drunk on power, or is it he and everyone around him who simply... I think everyone around him. I think everyone around him is just willing to do and say whatever he thinks is appropriate. The president's going to say, we're going to go do this, and they're not going to tell him no. And when there is a problem, somebody else is going to take the fall, and it will not be the president. You know, the, when the president was elected originally and then came back and, and was reelected, there was a tremendous groundswell of the youth vote. Absolutely. That was right after the president. Certainly, and I go back to this when he was initially elected. I, I've said this many times. The president and the Democrats used social media better than anybody else. They understood it. They accepted it. They got it. And still to this day, I'm looking at social media, and sometimes I wonder if the Republicans get it, because they still seem to be a long way behind. And that is what the younger generation, and I'm not just talking about teens, but 20s, 30s, 40s, use these days. Have the Republicans gotten it yet? You know, the Republicans have finally woken up. In 2012, we were handed an absolutely devastating loss. 
it was not only the Republicans that lost, but America lost in 2012, and it was because of the Democrats' ground game in the social media space. Having worked on U.S. Con and Connie Mack's Senate race, I handled all of his d social media, and I will tell you time and again we would have won that game had it been in the social media sphere, but the Democrats served the Republicans and the American public something that nobody could fight back on because they didn't know what was going on. And now we've seen them kind of pivot, and now they're really working hard in the social media space. But is social media still that drastically important? If you don't get it, you're going to lose an election? Absolutely. I mean, we see now, if we look to Ted Cruz, who's now making waves about 2016, he's using hashtag make, T make DC listen. And that has just gained a lot of traction, and he's gained a lot of notoriety in Twitter as well as Facebook. And people are really looking to Twitter as, you know, a way to break news, a way to talk about politicians. And so it's definitely in the space that Republicans are going to have to pay attention to in 2014 and 2016. I think if we're going to talk about a generational gap here, though, we need to talk about certainly just that, the age yes. that comes in here. There is still an opinion from many people, it, I don't have to even point it out, there could be th hundreds of them who say it, that the Republican Party is still a bunch of old guys sitting yes. around. Okay. <laughs> is that still the feeling that you get that some of the younger Republicans still kind of look at it and say, yeah, that's what it is. I think that there's a bit of a tug of war going on between the generations. We have the older Republicans who are trying to keep everything's tried and true the way that they've always known the Republican Party and the way that it's always worked for them. And then you have the younger Republicans coming in and saying, hey, this is where we are. We're on social media. We're wanting to get a grassroots effort going on. Why don't you come join us? And we want to talk about social issues. And the older Republicans are just not apt to that. They don't want to talk about it. They want to continue to toe the line that is, you know, small government and this is how we want it. But the problem is, is they're not really speaking to the younger generation. And I think the way they're going to be able to do that is by saying, hey, look, we are all for the same thing. We want small, limited government. We are for the NRA. We are for, you know, the right to bear arms. This is what we want. And the younger generation will fall in line. Pick out a couple of things there. You just mentioned a few. But let's pick out two or three of those that, in your opinion, as a political strategist, if the Republican Party is going to speak to that younger generation, again, to the 20s and the 30s, without hurting their base and what's there right now. What are those issues that they've got to focus on? Well, the issues that they're focusing on are you know, legalization of marijuana. They're focusing on gay marriage. And that's what the younger generation wants to talk about. And in order for the older Republicans not to hurt their base, they have to drive home the message of limited small government. Why is the government weighing in on the legalization of gay marriage? Why is the government now intruding on your privacy and tapping your phones? Why are they recording your phone messages and your, phone, your text messages? And that's how the Republican is going to be able to bring in the youth vote as well as maintain the ability to keep their base energy and engaged. Why is that not happening though? You would because we're sitting here and and you as a strategist are are hitting it right on the head very simply. So why is that not happening? What's 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 the log jam here that we can't seem to break in the I Republican Party? I think the Party? log jam is, is just trying to get them to understand that there's a younger generation trying to come up through the ranks and not just saying, oh, well, they're, they don't know what they want. They're still too young. They're not really sure. But the thing is, is that they do know what they want, and they are trying to tell the party. And it's time that the party kind of turn around and say, okay, well, we're going to let you into the fold, and we're going to listen. There is a groundswell there. I think it's, uh, maybe groundswell is a little bit too much, but every time I talk to people about a younger generation, and this is just a perception issue. And a lot of times this comes from the media, my own profession, which sometimes doesn't get it either, trust me, where they will say that, no, no, wait a minute, most of the young people of today are Democrat. Most of them are liberal. Most of them follow that thinking. They're getting it wrong, aren't they? Absolutely. I think that it's extremely unfair to put the younger generation in a box of being Democrat, Independent, or Republican. You know, we saw in 2008 and again in 2012 a bunch of younger, younger generation voting Democrat, but now in 2014 that's not what we're seeing because they were fed something that was a Band-Aid solution for an overarching problem. And 2014 is the year that the younger generation turns around and says, no, you know what, we don't want what you're selling us because what you're selling us is just a quick fix. It's not a long-term solution to the problem. Let me pivot a little bit here, a couple of minutes we have left and talk about the Veterans Administration and the VA scandal that is out here as well. And again, this is these are older Americans. These are a lot of times when you see them, you see a veterans who are in their 50s, 60s, 70s. Certainly that's not it. We have veterans in their 20s, 30s, and 40s who also are not getting the kind of care that they deserve. How how important is that to that younger Republican generation here? Are they paying attention and do they and are they really energized about trying to fix what's happening at the VA? Absolutely. The younger generation is really concerned about what's going on with their fellow veterans. I mean, the veterans, to see veterans that are my age and younger, that is absolutely a tragedy. And to see them not getting the care is awful. And so you know what? The younger generation is definitely paying attention. They want something to be done and they want it to be done now. Do you think that there is enough time? Boy, and here's a here's a setup question if I ever heard one but a lot of people will ask this. Is there enough time for the 
current standard Republican hierarchy to reach out, grab the younger generation, pull them with them in time, not just for 2014, but for 2016. Absolutely. The Republican Party has definitely begun to wake up ever since they woke up with a hangover at Romney losing in 2012. They're paying attention to the younger generation and they're doing everything they can to make sure that they're included in this upcoming election. I want to remind everybody that the website again is politicalhype.com. Yeah. Mariana Mancuso will join us from time to time here on Midpoint because she certainly brings us a fresher approach uh, to a lot of the people. And as we look forward to, and the Republican Party certainly has to know that they have to take the advantage and they have to take the initiative and they've got to go after these younger voters on absolutely. a daily basis. Absolutely. It is a pleasure. Thank, Thank you, you so much me. for coming in. You will be here again. I have no doubt about that. After the break, we're going to be joined by Newsmax TV's Francesca Page with a new feature that we call Checks and Balances. I am a I am someone who grew up in the New York City area and I still am, am very emotionally connected to what happened there at 9-11 in the Lower Manhattan. And there is a controversy that simply will not go away in Lower Manhattan because to some people, this is not just a place where tragedy happened. Some people seem to view it almost as an amusement park. Back with more right here on Midpoint.